Hi, so I'm here to talk to you about reducing Go programs. Now, reducing programs might seem like something really fancy, but it really isn't. And to illustrate that, I'm going to show you a, a, a really simple example. So this is a program that does something interesting. What it does is it panics. Wow, interesting. But it could be made simpler. It could be reduced. So you can, for example, remove that if and then simply panic. And you might say, how is this useful? Or why would I ever need this? But I have to go back a little bit to explain that. How many of you here know whose avatar this is? Raise, of, raise hands. That's decent. This is Dmitry Vukov. He's done a lot of cool stuff. But one of my personal favorites is GoFuzz. Fuzzing basically is feeding random bytes to some program. And then, for example, if it's a parser, you want to find bugs. So basically, just feed random bytes, and then you, it mutates them based on some factors like um, code coverage. And then it helps to find interesting bugs. And this was used with the Go compiler. For example, this is a bug that was found two years ago. And you can see that no human would ever write something like this. But the compiler actually had an internal compiler error, and it was fixed. But usually what happens is that GoSmith, it generates random bytes. So most of the time, it's not going to even generate valid Go syntax. So that's why he also wrote GoSmith, which instead of writing bytes, it writes syntax trees. So the programs are not still not going to be necessarily useful Go programs or even compile, but at least they're going to be correct syntax. So basically, it's just a faster way of finding interesting inputs for the Go compiler. And this was hugely successful when it was being used a year or two ago first. It found more bugs by the dozens. But the issue is that usually you would end up with bugs like this. Somewhere in there is a compiler internal error. And somebody had to go manually and go, wow. And then basically, how do you go from that to something like this? This was a bug that was fixed last year. If you try, if you try to get the address of an empty struct literal, it would, instead of giving you a valid compiler error, or maybe compile, it would basically, the compiler would crash. And initially, this bug was like this. And somebody moved, changed that into this. Now, you could do this. If you did this manually, you would basically do these simplifications one by one, and then try until, until basically you're bored out of your mind. But basically, as long as the program does something interesting. And this, to all computer scientists, should be screaming automation, right? So we're not the first ones to do this. In the C world, somebody wrote CSmith, and they had exactly the same problem, as you can see. So somebody wrote C reduce a few years ago. And what it does is it does reductions on the program. It tries simplifications and remo removing parts of a program. But it understands the C syntax, so it acts on the syntax tree. So it's going to be much faster and more intelligent. And it did stuff, it does stuff, the basic stuff that it does is, for example, remove a statement or inline a variable that's only used once. Or as you can imagine, for example, if you have a while, you can replace it with an if to simulate a single iteration. But Go has GoSmith, but no Go reduce, and I seem to have a lot of free time. And I thought, how hard can it be? And it actually is hard. And this is an example of how it works, a program that basically panics because you're out of range. And this is the same thing, but reduced. You get the idea. But we have some issues. The Go compiler is grumpy. Um, it doesn't like type check errors. It doesn't like variables that aren't used. Or for example, you have to, every time you want to try a change, since you can't link against the compiler, you have to write to disk, you have to reparse, you have to retype check, and you have to do everything. So even for a simple program, it's 100 milliseconds. And you could do more complex stuff. But basically, um, well, I run out of time, sorry. But basically, if you want to try the tool, it's this one. It's open source. It's not fancy, but it could be useful. Any input or feedback on how it could be made better is very much welcome. Thank you.